yet. Master Delgado Stream Deck as a streamer, you do not need to become a programmer yet. Here are the top three easiest and free plugins to begin with as a streamer. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below and I will help you out. By default, there will be a play audio plugin to your right. Drag this to a Stream Deck key, write down a title, and then choose a audio file, which is the sound that you want to be heard. Choose what commands you want your first and second press on the button to have. Configure how you want the sound to transition. And I will choose, for example, that it will fade in and fade out with two seconds uh, fade in and fade out to make it sound a bit smoother. Adjust the volume if you want. And it's very important that you select the right output source. This is where you want the sound effect to be heard. I am going to choose my headphones. If you want this to be heard on the stream, make sure that your OBS Studio or Streamlabs audio output capture is the same source as the one you set in your Stream Deck. And here you can hear how it works. To access the next plugin, you need to go to the Elgato Marketplace. Simply click on this colorful icon or go to the link in the description. Search for OBS Studio. If you use Streamlabs Desktop to stream and record, search for Streamlabs Desktop and download that plugin. You want to download the OBS plugin that is created by Elgato, and make sure that you are logged in to the same account on the Elgato Marketplace as you are logged into on the Elgato Stream Deck software. Here's a quick overview of what this plugin can do. Have a button for starting and stopping a recording. Or why not for starting and stopping a stream? Transition between scenes by dragging at least two scene plugins from the OBS plugin. Assign these two buttons to different scenes in OBS Studio. And now if you can click between these two to switch around. Save clips from your recordings and streams in OBS with the replay buffer feature on your OBS plugin. For this button to work, you need to make sure that you click on start replay buffer right before you start recording or live streaming. And if you don't have this button, you need to enable it by going to the settings, output, replay buffer, and enable. Also select how long you want the clips to be. And now whenever you click on this button, the last 30 seconds or whatever time you set from your live stream or recording will be saved as a separate video file on your computer. Additionally, you can assign a key to actually start the replay buffer. Remember that this key will activate your replay buffer but not enable this. This you do in the settings. It's very important that you note the difference between these two keys. The one on the bottom is for actually saving a clip and the one on the top is to activate this feature. With source visibility, you can select a source that you want to be able to choose whether you want it to be shown on stream or not. Streamlabs Desktop offers very similar features, however, it is very uh, limited in the variety of features that it has. Nonetheless, it's very useful. There is a Streamlabs plugin as well. Here you can take control of Streamlabs features that may be integrated into Streamlabs Desktop. For example, if I add the spin wheel feature, uh, this is how I would connect my Streamlabs account. Now that it's connected, I can click on a button on my Stream Deck to spin the wheel that I've set up here in Streamlabs. This is just a bonus tip if you happen to use Streamlabs features. The next one is so cool, it's called Stream Counter, so search for that in the Stream Deck Elgato Marketplace. Drag the stream counter to a key. Keep the initial value at zero. Click on those three dots and save this text file. I know it's confusing, but it will make sense in the end. Keep the short press action as add and the long press action as subtract. The calculation increment should be at one. At title prefix, you want to type in in words what it is you are counting for. So every time you press on this button, what is it that you are counting up for? For example, if you're gaming, something that's very common is that you have a win count. So every time you win, you can click on this button. Or another example could be kill count. But there are so many ways you can use this even outside of gaming. What's important is that you have a colon right next to this word that you have, and then a space. Click on the three dots next to the prefix file name and save this text file. 
Now open OBS, click on the plus button to add a source, click on text. Now instead of typing something here, you want to click on this box called read from file. Browse, you want to locate the prefix file that you downloaded. So basically the second text file that you saved to your computer. Open, and there you should see your stream counter on your OBS Studio stream. In this example, whenever I win a match, say, then I will click on this button, a short press, and it will uh, go up. If I want to subtract, I will do a long press. And if I want to completely reset the timer because uh, I've started a new stream, then I have to hold in this button for five seconds, I believe. Feel free to add many different types of counters by doing the same process again, but just change the prefix wording. That's basically it.